Okay, so now let's introduce the, the economic concept of the liquidity trap. Imagine this is the situation of the money market. We are right here. This is the money supply and the government, for whatever reason, decides that this interest rate is too high and uh, it increases the money supply in order to decrease the interest rate. And now imagine that it increases that money supply up to the point where the interest rate is actually zero. Because remember, uh, the nominal interest rate cannot be less than zero. It cannot be negative. There is a zero lower bound to the nominal interest rate. But now that we are at this point, if the government wanted to increase uh, the money supply uh, even further and farther, that will have no effect on the interest rate because it, it, it couldn't go uh, further down. There is a zero lower bound. Further increases in the money supply will have no effect on output. People don't need any more money and uh, your expansionary monetary policies will be powerless further on. Bear in mind that at this point where the nominal interest rate of bonds, that is the return of bonds, is uh, zero, then the return of bonds will be equal to the return of money, so people wouldn't really care about holding bonds or holding money. So the liquidity trap, which is just uh, the point, uh, well, these, the, the present of this, of being at the zero lower bound and wanting to uh, expand the monetary base, will have no effect on output. So monetary policy becomes unable to increase output, in some cases, back to, their, to the potential output level. So now let's build the LM with a zero lower bound. Imagine we are at this level of output and for whatever reason the uh, uh, the economy worsens and then the output goes down. That will actually uh, shift money demand to the left which will uh, generate an ex supply of money which will decrease the interest rate and that will be a movement along the LM curve. And now, the, imagine that there is another shock, negative shock to output, and that will actually uh, shift again to the left the money demand, and that will uh, decrease even further uh, the uh, nominal interest rate until it reaches zero. And at this point, if output keeps going down and down and down, then the interest rate will be actually here at the zero lower bound. And we have a nice liquidity trap. Now, imagine the government has uh, increased the money supply enough in order to get into a liquidity trap. That is, he has pushed the LM down until it meets the uh, IS at the zero lower bound. Well, the economy will stay there. Uh, if the IS is here, even if uh, the government pushes the, uh, the LM further, uh, down with another expansionary monetary policy, uh, the the LM and the IS cannot meet here because that would be uh, with a negative interest rate, and that is not possible. So the economy will stay right here, and um, uh, if that happens, then your output is here and your potential output is here, and it falls short. So a an expansionary monetary policy would not be able to make your economy. Uh, reach the potential output again when you have you get into a liquidity trap. So the only possibility would be to uh, shift, of course, the um, the IS to the right in order to uh, uh, meet potential output, but that would require uh, uh, increasing government expenditure, lowering taxes, which uh, actually increases the deficit and is bad for your public debt.